video we are going to go over how to run an analysis of variance or ANOVA test in SAS. First we're going to look at the one-way ANOVA. Now the typical one-way ANOVA and that we are going to use is PROC ANOVA data is equal to whatever the, the data set is. Class will be whatever the categorical variable is. The model is the response variable which has to be a numerical variable, otherwise SCS is not going to calculate it for us. It's equal to whatever the categorical variable is. And then we're going to use means categorical slash have test and then run. This have test that allows us to run the Levine's homocidacity test. And if we want to also run the Bonferroni test along with this, after the have test we would just have a bon after that in order to use the Bonferroni uh, difference of means. So for example, let's say using the Duke University data set that I have here, which I have already have imported into SAS, let's say I want to use Hogwarts House as a categorical variable and university applications, which if I could find on this list would be helpful. Here it is, university applications. Um, and then we want to see what type of interaction we have between those. And the program that we would use for that, I have in here, Prokinova data is equal to work.duke is why I call that. Class is Hogwarts House. We're going to use the model university applications, a numerical variable, is equal to Hogwarts House. Means Hogwarts House slash have test for that Levine's test and bon for the Bonferroni difference of means and then run. Running this, once it goes of course, um, gives you a whole bunch of information. It gives us our ANOVA test here with an F value of 0 0.1406. It gives us a um, which you know was with regards to the null hypothesis of all the means being equal and the alternative being that at least one of them is not equal based upon this particular probability this would then presume that the means are roughly the same as you can tell from these box plots most of the boxes appear to be roughly in the same ballpark this Hufflepuff house one is slightly larger than the rest but um, the, the Vint test for the homogeneity, we could see that um, we have a probability of 0 0.0895, which would tell us that those variances are equal, which is exactly what we want. And the comparisons that we can make from this, despite the fact that we have a test that shows all those means are equal or at least we can't deny that they're equal to uh, put it in the correct context. We could also see in that Bonferroni test down here that all of these differences appear to be pretty you know nothing too giant or big. The only big, big ones are the Hufflepuff house and Slytherin house and then Hufflepuff and Gryffindor, which is what comp com comprises of these two here, and then we have two more down here of the same thing. But despite those being slightly higher than the rest, which you could, you know, see is the case because the um, Hufflepuff house box in this box plot here is indeed the largest out of all of them. Or I shouldn't say largest per se. I would say uh, highest goes up to the highest value. And the whisker here goes all the way up to the highest value as well. But other than that though, that shows our one-way ANOVA. The two-way ANOVA, since we have the interaction effect, it's going to use PROC ANOVA data is equal to the data set. The class would be cate the categorical variable 1 and categorical variable 2 separated by space. The model is the response is equal to the 
categorical one variable, space, categorical two variable, space, categorical one, asterisk, categorical two. That allows for the interaction. And then the means we're going to calculate for categorical one and categorical two. Note how we cannot run Levine's homogeneity test for this two-way ANOVA. That particular program looks like this. I have a block ANOVA day is equal to work dot duke, cross, Hogwarts, uh, underscore house, and then fave underscore fantasy underscore universe. If I want to run this using the um, two categories of Hogwarts house and favorite fantasy universe, and I'm still using the university applications, so model university underscore applications is equal to Hogwarts underscore house space fave underscore fantasy underscore universe space Hogwarts underscore house asterisk fave underscore fantasy underscore universe and then we're going to run this and when we do so we are met with a uh, warning here which I'll get to in a second but we could see that we have a probability here we have a probability here of 0 0.2821 which would then just indicate that the means are roughly the same. None of these probabilities are below 0.05, which means we do not have an interaction effect, we do not have a row and column variable effects either from this, which is what that shows. And I did not include the uh, mean in this, so let me very quickly add that to the end here. Uh, means Hogwarts house and fave fantasy universe. So we go look at the box plots to see what's going on with this. And we could see that the distribution here of the Hogwarts House and the University of Applications, which we have previously seen, shows these box plots. The University Applications and Favorite Fantasy Universe, those, these box plots appear to be much larger, but they're not exactly too different to begin with either, which is the reason why some of those values themselves would be um, completely out there. We can, though, at the very least, once we use that means procedure, we could look at these variances to see that the variances are roughly pretty close to each other. The only one that's the highest is the Hufflepuff one, but that's besides the point. They are still roughly pretty close together, so the um, variances would be should be pretty close to each other. We could see that the means also, the Hufflepuff house mean here is the largest, the Gryffindor house one's the smallest, and we could see in the favorite fantasy universe, the uh, Game of Thrones one's the lowest, and the Legend of Zelda one is the highest. Which again you could tell from some of these box plots. But anyway, that's the one-way and two-way ANOVAs. And I should probably note, actually, before finishing this particular video, we did have an, a warning inside of this two-way ANOVA one. And if we check the log, we could see that warning here is PROC ANOVA has determined that the number of observations in each cell is not equal. And then it suggests a separate procedure that could be more appropriate for it. If we were to use this PROC GLM, as opposed to what we had, which will make this, and I might as well include the the means portion on here as well, so we could see what's going on. But the only difference, if I could type, that would be helpful. The only difference between um, these two codes is that this one uses proc geom as opposed to ANOVA. But when we run this one now, it's still going to give us the error because I still have the first one in there. But if we go scroll down here to that GLM procedure, 
we can see this model still not um, still not significant, and we could see that the uh, probabilities here, all of them, are still pretty high. We do though have the interaction plot, which show which shows that there should be some type of interaction with these, for the most part. But because all of these are high, we could show that those interactions then wouldn't really be aren't particularly um, significant in that sense. And then we can then again see those box plots as well. Well, we get the same type of answer despite whichever one we that we use. It's just the SAS gives us that warning about how Prokonova might not be the best option for it. But again, it gives the same answer though. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.